Hey everyone, it's Rick Carson and we're at Make Believe Studios and today I am excited to talk to you about DB Verb. DB Verb is a collaboration between Metric Halo, Make Believe, and the incredible producer and mixer David Bendeth. David has had the pleasure of working with such artists as Paramore, Of Mice and Men, Bring Me the Horizon, Red Jumpsuit Apparatus, Breaking Benjamin, plus many, many more. And we were really, really excited to go through his basement and pull through all of his recalls throughout his illustrious career and find some of the most exciting settings that we could from songs that we loved and bring them to you. But we only brought one very specific part of that to you, and that is the drum reverb, particularly snare drum reverb. And while this was designed with the snare drum in mind, it's pretty useful all over the place. It's useful on toms, it's useful on rooms, it's useful on the lead vocal. People have been utilizing this in our beta for a few months now, and I've just heard some incredible results. So I'm excited to see what you can come up with because the possibilities, while not endless, can lead to some really surprising results. So let me show you about those now. So looking at DB Verb, you'll see that it's laid out like a mixing console, which is familiar to not only David, but myself, because we both utilize consoles much like this. This is actually David's handwriting right here for small, medium, large, and extra. And those represent four different reverbs with each one of these faders having three different settings from one of those reverbs. Extra has a few different reverbs blended in, but small, medium, and large are three particular reverbs from David's life. And I will tell you about those in a quick second. You have solo and cut which is just like on a console. You can solo and you'll hear just that particular reverb. And if you cut, you will cut out that reverb from the mix. If you use the setting control, you can obviously scroll through the settings. But what's special about the settings control in this particular reverb is while you click through the settings, not only are you changing a reverb setting, but you are changing the song which the reverb setting originated from. So we're not going to go too in depth on which is which and, you know, we'll tell our friends and you may hear about it from the, you know, back channels. Currently, we want people to go and find which ones they love themselves, but all of them come from David's recalls and all of them come from his mixes. Songs such as Paramore's Misery Business, Breaking Benjamin, and Bring Me the Horizon's Shadow Moses are all represented within these settings. So go through, jump around, see if you can find some sounds that call back your favorite records. Below the settings control, you'll see that each reverb has a length control. And the length, if set to nine, is where it was in the original recall. You can then shorten all of the reverbs and fine tune them from there. There's also a hidden feature in the length control. Let us know when you find it. The next thing to talk about is pre-delay. In pre-delay, you have your default at zero and you have the ability to go to negative 30 milliseconds all the way out to 130 milliseconds. Negative 30 milliseconds is an interesting concept and what that really comes from is that we included the pre-delay that David had baked into all of his reverb settings. So if you pull this back negative 30 milliseconds, you will undo all the pre-delay that you'll find in his settings. But you can also play in that space where you use a little bit less than him or you can start and use even more. So from there, there's an equalizer section. And in the equalizer section, you're going to find three frequency choices, A, B, and C. And I won't tell you what those frequencies are. We want you to use your ears, but you can add high gain or you can subtract high gain. And that can do a lot to bringing some of these reverbs to life and making them jump out of a mix. From there, you have a high pass filter. And a high, the high pass filter works on just the reverbs. So it will help clear up any residual mud that you may have hanging out in the room from using a reverb that may be longer than uh, you would think you could get away with. Sometimes clearing up the low end will let you, you know, blend that in maybe at a lower level. And we like to use it. So we included it. We also included a wet dry, which is useful for utilizing the plugin 
in an insert situation. Typically, we're tending to use this on a send return, but if you want to insert right on something, you can use wet dry and it's very, very useful. So let's go check it out. First, I'm going to bypass the plugin so you'll hear just the snare drum dry. Now I'm going to turn on the plugin. You'll hear the reverb. I have a blend of all four of the reverbs going right now. So let me go through and I'm going to go and I'm going to play with just the snare drum playing and I'm going to play just one reverb at a time so you can kind of hear what it's doing. So once again, let me turn all of those on and you can hear those a little bit more isolated. The ability to blend the four reverbs, in my opinion, was really, really a game changer. And I'd always heard about people blending multiple reverbs and I experimented with blending multiple reverbs myself. But when I finally got to watch David do it in real time, in person, I got to see what each reverb was really bringing to the table. And it's interesting because I've purchased so many reverb boxes throughout my life, hoping that this next box will be that snare drum reverb. And ultimately what I found was that, oh, it does this really, really well, but I wish it did more of this, like this other box. For me, what I found is that having DV verb makes it very easy to just go and find the splat from the medium reverb, some of the space and width from small, and some of the length and tail from large, and extra, you know, sometimes I'm using it for a little bit more, you know, space and ambiance. Sometimes I'm using it for a little bit more crack and high frequency information, like I'm currently doing in this setting. So now that I have this going, I'm going to play it again against the drums, but now I'm going to go and utilize the equalizer to help it pop out of the mix a little bit more. So let's listen to it with the drums. Okay, so I didn't add a ton of high frequency information because I didn't feel like I really needed to. But what was happening was instantly you could hear the reverb come to life and pop out of the mix. So let me exaggerate this even more so you can hear what I'm talking about. Clearly that makes the reverb too loud. So if we wanted to, we could go and turn the actual aux down, you also can go and group all of your faders. So for this example, I'm going to just do that real quick. Okay, so that's a little bit on the bright side for me, but I'm going to turn that down. I'm going to leave my faders grouped and I'm going to go ahead and just try and blend that high frequency content information versus my reverb balance blend so I can figure out where it pokes through versus not sounding cloudy against the snare and the rest of the drum. And I'm pretty happy with that. So let's talk about the reverbs a little bit. Small is based on a Japanese reverb that David has been utilizing since the 80s. He loves this reverb for its lo-fi gritty character and its low bit rate. It is a classic reverb that you can go pick up on probably any Craigslist or Facebook marketplace in America because it was utilized in many, many PA systems across the land. It is also a very, very popular guitar effect that was utilized on a lot of records and was also utilized on some bass. But in his world, 
that is a snare drum reverb. And it was the first thing that we actually wanted to model. So the whole idea for what eventually ended up being DB verb started with that Japanese reverb. B, which is medium, is based on a British reverb. This reverb defined the sound of the 80s and is known for its nonlinear characteristics. David, what I found, had some very interesting settings where he wasn't actually utilizing the non-lin setting. He was utilizing a couple of the other algorithms, but he was going about it in an interesting way so that they sounded very, very splatty. So let's go listen to one of those real quickly. Without it. Just incredibly splatty. So I'll go ahead and turn that back down. And I will unmute the rest of our reverbs. And I'm just going to bring our whole mix down. Large is based on a European reverb that David utilized for things like space and ambience from what I could tell in mixes, he tended to have this be set up for longer than these other two reverbs were set up by a considerable amount. And in one of the recalls, I actually found a nine second version, which is included, it is the yellow setting on large. That was utilized as a very distinct snare drum effect that some people like to call a snare bomb, where you, you have a break in a song and you hit a snare into a big reverb throw, and it's an incredible sound. Extra are some settings that David had utilized that come from multiple boxes that we wanted to make sure that we included. And so if you actually scroll through the three different settings, you're scrolling through three different reverb units, which is a little bit different than the other three, but they're all very useful and you should try them out. They're great for blending in. These are the main features of DB Verb, and we're excited to see what your favorite combinations are. Please let us know what your favorite settings are, and let us know when you find that hidden little feature I was talking about. Thanks. Have a great day.